welcome to another Tech Tip Thursday, and I'm returning to my series on Google Sites. So I went ahead and opened up the Google Site that I and you can see that I only have a home page. So looking at this, this is when you first log into Google Sites, it's going to look like this. If I go to pages, this is going to show all the pages under my navigation. OK, so first I'm going to add a page and I'm going to call this images. Done. And this is going to put it under my navigation. Notice it adds it to the navigation here and puts it up here. OK, and I'm going to go ahead and on this page, I'm going to insert an image. I can upload or I can select. Upload is going to take you to upload it on your computer. Select is going to take you to your Google Drive. OK, so it takes me automatically to Google Drive. I can also do a Google image search. So let's say um, that I was talking about. Um, let's say I'm talking about the parts of a heart. So I'm going to look up heart diagram. And Google Images is going to give me lots of different heart diagrams. Um, I think this one is pretty, so I'm going to double click on that one. And here's an image of the heart. OK. On second thought, I probably wouldn't have chose that one because look at how pixelated it is. But you know, just choose good images. Pixelation is horrible. <laughs> um, I can also resize it, crop it, delete it, all that stuff right here. I can link so I could have a picture of a heart and have it linked to a whole thing about hearts, right? Um, when you go to images, you also can upload. So I can upload an image from my computer. So these are things that are on my computer. So let's say I want to add this. Um, and this is how to write a prompt for AI. It talks about give the context, the role, the examples, the audience, the task, and evaluate. Make sure you look at it, right? OK, so these are ways to be specific about AI prompts in case you ever want to know. That's another way we can add images, right? So all sorts of different things you can do with images. Um, but let's say I don't want just this picture. I want to have a PDF next to it that shows a description of the heart. So let's pretend like I have that in my Google Drive. I know I don't have that PDF in my Google Drive, um, but I do know I have PDFs in my Google Drive. So I'm going to go to my lesson materials and let's go to American Dream. And I have PDFs now. Be aware of copyright laws. I know that the Barack Obama speech is in the public domain because it's a speech. So I'm going to go ahead and double click and it puts that PDF in there. OK, so. One thing you should notice with the PDF that's different from the pictures is the students have this little square. And when the students are looking at the site, so when I preview this site, um, the students will have the ability to open this in their PDF viewer. It's taken a second to load. So if I click on this, it will open it and pop it out as a PDF, and I can view it separately, right? If I was setting this up for students and this was a reading about the heart and then I had the image of the heart, I would probably want the text next to the picture, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this and I'm just going to drag it so it's up next to this. And you can drag and drop a lot of things, right? And I also want it to be full page length. So I'm going to scroll down so I make sure you're getting the whole page instead of just like half a page, right? Um, and I can also make that as wide or as big as I want. So let's say I want the heart to be a little bit smaller. Uh, put it there. Now, it does force you. One thing about Google Sites is they try very hard to make it so you can't make things ugly. So they do some things like they have this line that it wants to resize to. And it's going to kind of force you to stay within that line, that space. Can be nice because it keeps it looking good. Um, can also be annoying if you want to do more custom things because it won't let you put things exactly where you want them sometimes. But it does make it really easy to put things in. OK, uh, you know what? Last thing I'm going to show you is how to put a video in. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new page um, and I'll call this a video. And of course, you wouldn't have to put these all on new pages. I just feel like I'm cluttering up that page and I want to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go to insert. And of course, if I had a video on my drive, I, and I do have videos on my drive, I can just insert it there from drive like I did before. But I also want to point out to you that you can go to YouTube and insert a video from YouTube. So I'm going to look for Apex key terms because I know I have a video on that. And it is actually the first video I get when I search. I don't know if that's because Google 
is um, directing me there because it's my page, or if, if anyone searches Apex key terms, they get my video. That would be crazy. Okay. But here I can resize my video. They can play it right in. Let me take it to preview so you can see that. Um, and I can press play right on here and Okay, um, so you can go ahead and play the video. If you're a student, you can also copy the link and go right to YouTube with it. There are lots of things that you can embed um, that are like set within Google, and you can also still always pull them from your drive. So there are multiple ways to put things in. And there's also the embed function, which I will talk about later because this video is already long enough. Anyway, I hope you're making some great sites out there to use for your classes. Have a great week.